Hey, um, welcome back to another video. Um, let's just get right into it. Um, <clears throat> last time I wanna, I went, I said, I said some things that were wrong, um, <laughs> that I'm not proud of. Um, first of all, um, if you have these three things, there are uh, six ways that you can order them, not eight. It's three factorial, not two to the third, uh, like I said earlier. So there are implicitly six total exercises for how you can show that there are certain statements that are different um, based on you know these things being reordered. Um, the other thing that I wanted to check was, um, the other thing that I wanted to look at, I guess, was how you can build this um, list in reverse if you use uh, left recursion. Um, that's certainly uh, a, you know fine, um, you know, for certain circumstances, um, right? So here we're using this sort of recursive part of the definition on the left. Um, and we're returning the uh, link that is created from this right path name, the string link that's created from this right path name, and we're assigning its next pointer to the first thing. So it's gonna build the list in reverse. Um, however, you know, still to like my point about path names, this recursion not being correct, that's not what they do here, right? they return the first thing and assign the next thing to the new uh, name value list created from this. Um, so, but in any case, um, you know, uh, they do, um, where, where were we looking at that had that left recursion? I think it was one of these locator lists. <laughs> Um, this is right recursion, um, and it was this. It was this one. Yeah. So this at list uses left recursion, and yet it still builds a uh, a linked list. Um, however, it you know um, returns the um, env list created from the the right hand side of the two nodes, right? This is, and then, you know, has its next pointer point to the first thing. So this at list gets built in reverse, actually. Um, it's kind of interesting, I don't know. Um, the other thing that I said, I said something about, uh, actually, I'm not gonna worry about that because um, I said the right thing uh, immediately afterwards. So I'm sure you can pick up pick it up from context. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I think that's basically it. Mainly just the uh, three factorial versus two to the third uh, mix up. So yeah, eh, should have uh, should have uh, studied more enumerative, enumerative combinatorics, I guess. But uh, in any case, um, uh, oh, the other thing that I wanted to check was um, whether or not you can attach to a uh, pseudo device. And uh, basically, um, well, let's, you know, um, I don't see any reason why not, you know, um, but I guess we'll find out uh, today if we look at this add dev function. Um, yeah, so this, I mean, we might as well just get into it, right? Um, so, you know, last time we talked about the machine definition grammar. Um, this time we're going to talk about the actual, if I can scroll up enough, configuration grammar. So we've already been over file, object, and include. Um, yeah, the specs, 
right? This is just sort of preliminary parsing. Um, you can have like a config specification followed by a new line, uh, or you know you can have just empty lines, um, or you can have like an error function. Um, we've already been over file object and include. Um, you can also have like you know include options. So the action that actually gets taken there is to um, write this um, opt list is you know opt list comma option. So it uses left recursion. So this action is going to get reduced. You know before you see the comma, which is fine. We just add options. Um, <clears throat> um, it's in main.c. Yeah, so what this does is it calls do option basically. <clears throat> and then um, we add the option to the select table or select tab um, so that you know if you want to include a file based on whether or not this option is in there uh, you can do that um, <clears throat> this do option function um, there we go um, yeah, all it does is um, insert the, uh, you know, um, insert the um, option into the hash table with the name and this NV list um, as the like pointer object of the hash entry. Um, so hash entries are kind of like NV lists, um, except instead of having like, basically they just have a name, which is what you hash off of, and the value, which is just a void pointer, um, <clears throat> or a pointer to void. Um, so yeah, and if this works, then we just, you know, add NV to this like, you know, end of the like, um, in V list, which is going to be like the end of the options list, um, yeah, and you know, update this to be what it's supposed to be. So this is a triple, it's a triple pointer, I guess, um, because we want the address of the actual double pointer, because we want to update the actual double pointer because it's a global variable that like next opt. Uh, or like next make opt if we were using make options or like next file is for all files you know those like pointers to the end of the linked list those are double pointers because they're a pointer to a pointer that you're supposed to update and here we're going to update the pointer to the pointer so we need to pass the pointer to the pointer to the pointer um yeah so anyway um that's the options situation. Um, remove options, it just removes the option from the options linked list and the hash table. Um, make options, I mean it's not really used so um, it's not a huge deal. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Max users just sets the max users variable, um, right? So previously the max users line, um, when it's in this first section, right, is used to set default max users. So right, this is the minimum number of max users, this is the maximum number of max users, and this is the default number of max users. Uh, here we're actually setting what it's going to be, right? If we don't do this, then we use the default max users from above, and you know what this number is has to be between the minimum and the maximum. But you know, not really a big deal. Um, this config line we've talked about; it doesn't really do much. Um, 
because we only have one thing, but basically it says like, <clears throat> this is where our root device is gonna be for this kernel, uh, this is where our swap space is gonna be, and this is where we're gonna dump any like crash dumps, um, like disk space. Um, like if you look at it down here, like the parsing is basically we create a conf structure um, and yeah, this is a global variable for yyparse, this conf, and we create this conf structure um, and add it, right? Um, it start off, you start off with like the root swap and dump devices being null, um, but you can change that with some of these sysparam lists. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, like none of this ever actually happens because, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, some of it happens, but basically um, it doesn't really matter uh, because it's swap generic is what we use. And when we run like, you know, this doesn't get used really many other places. Um, so I'm not gonna worry about it uh, because I don't wanna, you know, muddy the waters too much. Um, yeah, so the real stuff is in these next three lines. Um, this pseudo device, device instance, and device instance. Um, and in fact, this one is kind of pointless too. But, um, yeah. Um, we can, um, yeah, so let's go to, um, yeah, um, let's look at this add pseudo line. So you'll notice there's a number, this in pseudo is just a number, and this disable is either zero or one. Um, and if you disable a pseudo device, you basically can't uh, add it again later. I tried to find it. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like it can be re-enabled later. Um, but it also doesn't seem to be used at all in the default configuration for OpenBSD. So um, <clears throat> this in pseudo defaults to one. You don't actually have to include it. Um, if you look down here, it can be either a number or empty, right? If it's empty, then it just defaults to one. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, um, when we add a pseudo device, we make sure it hasn't already been defined as a device and is a pseudo device and uh, make sure that it hasn't previously been added. Um, you actually can add the device twice, um, <clears throat> but it only update, updates the like in pseudo, it doesn't update disable. Um, <clears throat> and yeah. Um, if it wasn't previously added, we put it in the device instance tab, um, set disable, and add our dev base name, so then in pseudo name, and its attributes to select tab, and add ourselves to the all pseudo list. Um, it's pretty basic stuff. Um, let's go to sim.c just so you can realize that I'm not lying. Add pseudo. Um, yeah, so we look it up. Um, if it's undefined, right, then we give an error. If it's not a pseudo device, then we also give an error. Um, <clears throat> if it's, uh, you know, already been uh, defined, which is, you know, if it's already in the device instance tab, then it's already been defined. Um, then we just update the, you know, du max number. Um, and, yeah, like that's that's pretty much it. This du max, um, just in case, I don't know, maybe it's worth it to, um, yeah, so um, that du max number is what this number is for all of these pseudo devices. So like PF log is a pseudo device. We append attach here um, and then add the number. So right, some of them are non are not one, right? So there's a four, um, there's a two. Most of them are one though. Um, 
But yeah, that's where these go, is in this struct pdev init. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, set disable, add it to the select base. So this select base function, is uh, right if the device attachment is non null then we insert the device attachment name into the select tab and then we also insert the device attachments uh, plain attributes into the select tab um, and then the dev base name gets added and <clears throat> all of its uh, attributes get added plain or otherwise uh, so, yeah, fairly basic stuff. Um, I don't know. I keep saying basic stuff because, like, when you understand it, I feel like everything's basic. But, like, this was certainly all very confusing to me uh, when I first started looking at it. So uh, don't be discouraged by that. Um, yeah. Um, so then this uh, – I'm going to skip this because – as far as I can tell, it's never used to like re-enable a device uh, in the default configuration. Um, it also uh, looks like you have to enable something at a device. So um, this attachment has to be actually a device and it can't be an attribute. Not sure why. Um, so yeah. Um, it's also probably better to look at like you know the this original thing before we look at the um, enable uh, version. So let's look at how we add something in the first place, possibly disabling it, and then go from there. So this disable is over here. Um, this flags opt is really like this flags opt never gets used anywhere else. All it is, um, it. Is, can be used, I guess, to like distinguish uh, different device instances that would otherwise look the same. Like they have the same name, they attach to the same attribute. Um, otherwise, like you know, um, you can use flags opt to distinguish between those, and then it also, um, let's see, gets put. Um, what is it? Yeah, so it gets put right here after loc. So most of the time the flags is zero. It just defaults to that. But it gets put in this like array of CF data structures. So for whatever that's worth, um, I you know I think we'll probably have to get into kernel code to understand exactly what any of that means because um, it's probably going to be different for each device. But, you know, that's what that is. Um, these locators, this is, you know, things that you need to specify to attach to your attachment, right? So this attachment specifier right here can be either a, um, a device or an attribute. Um, if it's an attribute, these locators have to match the locators of the attribute, which, you know, get defined uh, up here when we define attribute with this interface, right? This interface is a like list of locators, if assuming it exists. Um, so, yeah. Um, um, this disable will disable this device. Um, yeah, like, um, so let's see if I miss anything in my notes. Uh, a specific device or a any device of this kind if the unit number is zero. So this device instance has to be a dev base followed by some number or a star. And this attachment uh, has to be either a dev base um, followed by like, you know, a question mark, meaning like any dev base um, or a number if it's a dev base. Um, if it's an attachment, then it just, or an attribute, then it just has to be followed by a question mark. Um, so yeah, the details of why that's true um, basically come from the function that like splits this uh, into its 
base name and its like unit number, um, it doesn't really distinguish between attributes and dev bases. So you have to put a question mark on the end of an attribute um, versus, you know, so that it doesn't try and parse it as a dev base that doesn't have any special like number at the end of it. Um, in any case, um, yeah. Um, if you do attach to a device right here instead of an attribute, um, yeah, or a real device ending in a number or a star. Uh, if you do attach to a dev base, um, then what we your we have to find an attribute because everything has to attach actually to some attribute. So we attach to the first attribute that config finds that this device is allowed to attach to. Um, so if we go to okay, here we go. Um, yeah, so this is the function that gets called um, if we're at root, right, so this at string that gets passed, passed to us, um, then <clears throat> um, we just like create a new device instance, um, which like, so this get devi um, is always going to return a new device instance, even if you are looking up a like even if this name is the same as a device instance that has already been added it, it will just create an alias for it um so um yeah we figure out what you know our base is um yeah based on this name so this get devi, it must, I'm pretty sure that's where we'd call split from. Yeah, so get devi splits the name into its like name, and or its base and its unit. Um, <clears throat> and then we look at, like look up the device base in the dev base tab. Um, and it also doesn't return pseudo devices. Um, so yeah, you can't attach to a pseudo device, it looks like, um, because um, if, you, uh, if you do, right, if you do try to attach to a pseudo device, right, um, it, that's gonna be right here. Um, this is gonna throw an error, basically. Um, so, like, yeah, um, this will split the pseudo device, um, you know, into its appropriate channels, um, but then this will throw an error. So, yeah, um, but yeah, if we're at, if we're at root, then um, we just make sure that um, we're actually allowed to attach to root by looking at the uh, device uh, attach or the instance base attachments, right? So it has a list of attachments, which are which are rules for attributes that you could that you can attach to, um, and on list uh, checks for that. Right, so here we're just checking that we actually can attach to root. Um, and then, like, notice that we're going to skip all of this else statement, including find attachment. Uh, yeah, we're going to come back, come back in down here, right? Um, so that's, I don't know, important for the, we're not going to try to even try to find the attachment um, for yeah um for root um although actually no we do find it because yeah it's just whatever attachment has we're on when we break out of this for loop 
Um, yeah, so, anyway. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so then the other issue is if we're not at null or at root, then we're either at a device instance um, or we are at an attribute. Um, so basically, like, the first thing that we do um, is... <clears throat> look up the get a new device instance um, from get devi. Um, this split splits our at device into the at buff and at unit. Um, we set our instance base. This is just some string handling. Um, and then we try to look up, right, we set AB to the at base, right, so in case we are at an actual device, um, we'll have it, you know, that device will be stored in a, B. Um, <clears throat> if it's an attribute, right, we, well, we try and look it up in the attribute table. Um, and, yeah, then, you know, we check this attribute and make sure that, like, this instance base can actually be on this attribute, like, make sure our instance base is on its, you know, device list and then we go to find attachment so that's the most common case probably is we're attached to an attribute and then we just go and like try to find which uh, attachment rule allowed us to attach um, if we're not attached to an attribute then uh, we make sure that the thing that we're trying to attach to is actually a device and then we uh, search all of the devices for, or sorry, all of the attributes uh, of the device base uh, to make sure that, and make sure that like our instance base, the thing that we're trying to attach onto the tree, um, right? We're trying to put this instance base at this at base, right? We wanna make sure that this at base has an attachment attribute uh, for our instance base. And if we do, then we're going to go and figure out what that attachment is, essentially, um, right here. Otherwise, we throw an error because, you know, the configuration is not good. Um, so, yeah, then we, you know, we have our instance base um, and its lists of attachments and we just loop through all of them and check to see if the attribute that we're at is like on the at list, right? Um, so the attribute um, is right set even for devices that uh, when we try to attach to an actual dev base, the attribute still gets set because we look for the first attribute that we're allowed to attach to. Um, so you probably shouldn't attach to a device and then specify locators because the device could have multiple attributes um, that you that like the device can uh, that the device can actually attach to, um, and that would not be good. So uh, <laughs> you might end up uh, you're just sort of playing this game of like uh, letting the code choose which attribute you attach to for you uh, instead of choosing yourself. Um, so probably they don't do that. Um, hopefully anyway. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and so we're just, right, once we find this, we break out of here and yeah, we set this instance base attachment. And then this function just fixes up the locators to like, cause you can specify your locators in any order. Um, and so this just like reorders them correctly and fills in defaults and complains if you specified any of your locators wrong. And it just returns um, basically a list of, or an array of character pointers. It returns a character pointer pointer, um, which is just, you know, a list of strings that represent integers um, that are the values that you need to specify for this 
you know, a tribute. Um, you know, we set the at string to that. We set our at attribute appropriately. Uh, this may or may not be set depending on whether or not we are at a device or an attribute. Um, this is always going to be set. Uh, this is always going to be set as well. Um, it's either going to be like the actual number of this at dev or it's going to be uh, negative two, which is just the like deep, the value that they give uh, to the question mark. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Um, and then the CF flags we already talked about, that just gets set here and then doesn't get touched until we put it into that ioconf file later. And then we set disable appropriately. And then, you know, <clears throat> here, uh, so the instance base attachment will include all instances, even aliases. So like you get added to this instance base attachments uh, instance list, right? All the things that are attached, all the device instances that are attached using this attachment go on this list, alias or not. Um, so it's not the same thing for a device bases uh, instance list. That only includes one of each alias. So that'll come. That'll be important when we move on to pack um, later. But yeah, um, and then you know we add the instance base and all of its uh, attributes, and the instance base attachment and all of its plain attributes to the select base, and uh, then we free the locator list, and that's it. Um, I think right above this is enable dev, which. Um, make sure that like this has already been enabled um you know sets this local variable to the base splits everything up um the at string into you know its unit and its base um <clears throat> and then we look it up in the dev base tab right so if you can't find it in the dev base tab then that's not good so uh <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, um, that means that you can only enable things at devices later, not at attributes. So anyway, that's kind of weird, but yeah, here we make sure that we actually can attach and then we find the attachment and then we unset disable. Um, so, yeah, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, fairly basic. It's just like, I don't know why they only let you look up in the dev base tab. Um, probably because it's very rarely used. So, anyway, um, that's... Yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, hopefully these, uh, you know, I'm trying to be a little quicker. That last video was a little long, so I don't know, we'll see how we did. But uh, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully you learned something, and uh, let me know. Uh, yeah, let me know if uh, you didn't or if uh, things can be better. Um, but... <clears throat> At this point, we're just going to get into all the things that we do um, with the information we just got. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a decent amount, but uh, I don't know. It's not too bad. So thanks for watching and uh, have a good rest of your day. Peace.